So I've been looking for a cheap everyday camera. The Sony a6000 seems to be the best budget and beginner friendly camera out there today. Despite it being a little bit old, the Sony a6000 actually has very similar specs to more modern and much more expensive cameras. That's because the a6000 has a few secrets that might actually make it a better camera for certain kinds of people. So in this video, let's figure out who exactly the a6000 is for and what this one hidden feature is that makes it such an amazing camera. Also, if you want to pick up the amazing a6000, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. So when looking for the perfect budget friendly or beginner friendly camera, chasing the most amount of resolution or trying to get the cleanest, most polished photos and videos is usually a losing battle. Rather, you should try and find a camera that has the ability to create unique photos and videos. This way you can take the blandest things in your life and make them feel special with the right camera. And above all, you wanna make sure it's an easy and fun to use camera, so this way, shooting photos and videos is never a hassle, because I promise you, getting a cheap camera that's hard to use is totally going to ruin your photography and video experience. And that's why the Sony a6000 is such a special camera. The a6000 really feels like you're using a modern camera. It has a really good feel in your hands, the grip is nice and deep. It is super small and super light. This is something I can walk around with all day without ever feeling like this camera is a hassle. But just because it's a cheap camera doesn't mean it's poorly built. The body is actually fully metal and it's a very rock solid camera. You can pretty much put this camera through anything. And the button layout and menus are exactly what you expect from a modern Sony camera. This camera does not feel old at all. And best of all, it also has a built-in flash for photography, which is becoming increasingly rare on modern cameras. However, the a6000 does not have an audio jack for external audio, and the internal audio is, well, we're gonna do an audio test for that later on, so we'll see how the internal mic sounds. One thing to note is that while it does have a screen on the back, it is not touch sensitive, and it does not flip up to the top or the side, so you cannot see yourself. It only kind of comes up halfway here, which is perfect for photographers, but it might be a bit of a hassle for vloggers and people who want to see themselves or record themselves. Another thing to note about the a6000 is that while it still feels like a modern camera, it does not have modern thermals, so it eats through batteries like there's no tomorrow. You will definitely need to have two or three spare batteries on you at all times if you plan on shooting with it all day, and Amazon actually sells third-party batteries for pretty cheap, about $40 for a two-pack, so I highly recommend picking some of those up. On paper, the a6000 has specs that are pretty close to newer, more expensive cameras, but that does not mean it's going to look the same as newer cameras because there's still some key differences. However, that's exactly why the a6000 looks so unique. The a6000 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is pretty similar to what you see on the a6100, a6400, and it shoots at a blazing fast 10 frames per second. Now, 24 megapixels is plenty of resolution to get good looking photos, and with 10 frames per second, you're going to be able to shoot any kind of fast moving action like sports or your angry dog. And the autofocus is just as snappy as you would expect from a more modern Sony camera. However, in video, you might see it kind of lose focus for a second and kind of rebound, but it's pretty rare. Now, this is where the differences come in. Despite having the same sensor as more modern cameras, the a6000 actually produces really soft and dreamy images. And when you zoom into these images, you notice they're not particularly sharp and they kind of have almost a vintage film-like look to them. But because the a6000 has such a soft look to it in both photos and videos, I recommend using more modern lenses. Two lenses that I really, really like are the Sony 35 f 1.2 lens. It's super crisp, super sharp. It's going to give you really good photos and videos. And the Sony 55 to 210 with a variable aperture. This is like the ultimate zoom lens for this camera. You'll also probably get it with a kit lens, which is a 16 to 55. This lens is okay, it's like good in a pinch, but it's not the best lens for this camera. But with these three lenses, you're going to get gorgeous photos and videos. Most modern cameras tend to have a very clean, crisp, polished look to them, and in my opinion, that can start to look a little bit boring. If you're someone that wants to shoot something artistic or you wanted to shoot casual photos on your Instagram, with the a6000, you get this extra little bit of sauce on all of your photos and videos, and even if you don't edit them, you still get this really unique looking image from this camera. Now, if you're someone that really likes to edit your photos, you're going to have an amazing starting point for your photos and videos because of the unique look that this camera delivers. Something to note is that because the a6000 is an older camera, while it does shoot RAW, it only shoots 12-bit RAW, which is an older standard, and most cameras nowadays do 14-bit RAW, which may not seem like a huge difference, but I promise you it's a huge leap 
So this is not a camera that you can really push as far when it comes to color and light as you can with a modern camera. But again, this is a camera where I really recommend using most of the internal look. When the A6000 came out, most people didn't like the colors because they weren't true to life. But if you look at these colors now, they actually have this really cool blue look to them. And even when shooting at nighttime, you'll actually notice the green street lights look kind of teal or blue. So overall, this camera just gives you this really unique color palette that I simply do not see in modern cameras. When it comes to video, it only shoots full HD at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second for slow motion. There is, however, no fancy 4K or 120 frames per second slow motion. It's a pretty bare bones camera because it's an older camera. But chances are you're probably using the A6000 to shoot casual video. And for that reason, I actually think the A6000 is a great camera to just whip out, take a few clips at a party, on vacation and put it back in your pocket and it can take really boring stuff and make it feel special. The A6000 isn't the best for vlogging. While it does deliver really high quality video, the screen only flips up halfway so you can't really see yourself. However, the internal audio is actually really solid and this is what the audio from the A6000 sounds like. So who exactly is the A6000 for? Well, you can get the A6000 used at rock bottom pricing, somewhere between $300 to $350, $400, at the most. And you can actually still find it brand new at retailers for full price at about $800. But if you're going to pay full price, you might as well get a brand new camera. Considering the price, the A6000 brand new, I don't think is a great deal. I would actually recommend picking up a Sony ZV-E10 or the brand new Sony A6100 because you're going to get 4K video, better autofocus, and just everything about those cameras is going to be newer and better. And if you do want that vintage charm, which you will not get in these cameras, these cameras have a very clean and polished look to them, you can always do a little bit of editing to get that vintage look in camera. But if you're like me and you really want a cheap, casual camera, the A6000 is, in my opinion, the best one on the market right now. Overall, I really like the A6000 and I actually prefer it over more modern and much more expensive cameras. First of all, it comes at a rock bottom price of $350 to $400. On top of that, it comes with a really interesting lo-fi look and the color palette by itself is really interesting. I like the fact that the colors aren't true to life. It kind of reminds me of old school film photography. But overall, this is a camera that I highly recommend picking up if you want to just shoot artistic photos and videos casually, you don't want to do any editing, and you want to get an interesting look right in camera. And if you want to pick up the A6000 or the A6100 or the Sony ZV-A10, Make sure to check out the links in the description down below and I will see you guys in the next video.